you're very late into the game and you have the option to finally build a colossal ship, a juggernaut. But you're not sure what to put on there and how to design it. Well, don't worry, here we are. I have a design for you. We are going to equip the best, as I've tested them before, repeatables, X slot weapons we have at our disposal, that being the Giga Cannon, which will do massive damage against shields and still additional damage against hull. You're going to want to put in all of the advanced strike craft at your disposal. And then the medium slot weapons, I'd go for something like a plasma cannon that's going to have lots of hull and armor damage output against other ships. Jumping over to our defensive modules, you're going to want to fill up on as many shields as you can get your hands on. Following that, I'm going to make a bit of a change from tradition here, and I'm going to say, don't go with crystal hull plating, go with neutronium armor, or armor in general. Why am I saying that though? Well, in this case, you can only ever build one juggernaut, and you want that juggernaut to be as survivable as possible. Armor is slightly better if you ignore the cost of it than crystal plating in terms of your survival. For that reason, I'd recommend not going the crystal plating here. For your modules, I would definitely say throw in a couple of shield capacitors, get that juicy plus 10% shield hit points. That will combine really nicely with all of those, those shields you've got on your ship. And then go for a couple of auxiliary fire controls just to boost up the accuracy on your ships. If you're worried about your damage output, go for the artillery combat computer, though a safer option can of course be the carrier combat computer, but look out, that additional ship engagement range is going to mean your juggernaut might engage first before any other fleets in the system and thus be the only ship targeted by the enemy first, which will be very dangerous. And if you enjoy this video, please dwarf that like button. And now we get to the auras available. These auras will apply to all allied ships in the system or all enemy ships in the system in the case of offensive auras. The best aura I would say is the target acquisition array. This is going to give you a massive, massive advantage in that your ship's weapons range will be at plus 40%. You will be doing an alpha strike with your ships before any enemies will even get the chance to shoot at you. If you have enough range bonuses stacked and your opponent doesn't, you may even get two full volleys in before they have the option to return fire. That can be absolutely devastating to any fleet. Following that, the strike command can be very useful if you're running a carrier heavy fleet. Carriers are very good at taking down other corvette swarms or other small ships, so don't forget to include them if you're needing some defense on that end. And if you then are, having a strike command can reduce the amount of carriers you need and therefore increase the number of battleships you can keep in your fleet while still being able to deal with corvettes effectively. The subspace amplifier on the surface seems very nice, however in actuality it's quite a pain. Yes you get minus 40% hyper jump charge time and hyper jump cooldown and jump drive cooldown and that's great, but if this juggernaut moves first, which it may well do, other fleets will then suddenly lose this minus 40% and require longer to jump, meaning you can end up with your fleets strung out as only the front fleets will be getting this benefit and they'll be going faster and faster and faster and getting ahead of any other ships. Very much an annoyance and a bit of a nuisance rather than actually a benefit. In order to benefit properly from this, it does require quite a bit of micromanagement. The ECM emitters are generally rubbish. Point defense is not so great in the game, it's very ineffective against fighters and missiles, and people don't even tend to run it. I really couldn't say I recommend this offensive aura, but if you really want to go for it, I guess there's some flavor there. And finally, munitions plant, plus 30% orbital bombardment damage. Again, not so useful. Yes, you'll bombard down some enemy uh, planets slightly faster, but generally speaking, just bring in some more ships. Um, there's, I've never been in a situation where I didn't have access to a large number of ships and I was attempting to bombard down the planet and desperately needed to get it down just 30% quicker. If you're in that sort of situation, uh, I don't think you'll be in that point when you've got access to this juggernaut, to be quite frank. If you are, build some ground forces, land on the planet that way, you know, don't waste the only juggernaut ore you have with a munitions plant. There's one more thing I haven't mentioned with the juggernaut, and that is the shipyard. Your juggernauts will come equipped with a shipyard, 
that is automatic. There's nothing you can do about that. It's very beneficial. This means you can queue up and build ships on your Juggernaut. Quite a few, you can build two at a time, which is really fantastic. But there's another added benefit that you have available. I have a couple of damage fleets selected. I'm going to right click on my Juggernaut and get them to enter orbit. That's going to mean that these two fleets, which have a little bit of damage, not too much, but definitely some damage, they're now going to fly into orbit with the Juggernaut. Now they are repairing themselves. This means you don't even need to have a shipyard. You don't need to have a regeneration, an engineer admiral. You don't need any of the uh, other technologies. Simply make sure to have a Juggernaut at your front line, just behind your front line, and you can move your ships back, bring them into orbit with the Juggernaut, and repair them up to full health, as it basically operates like a starbase. So overall, this is the design I would recommend. Go for it, try it out, see if you like it. If you don't, please let me know. If you'd like to know more about how to design Titans and that sort of ship, click the video on screen now.